Like, I always was writing. I mean, I've been writing rap since sixth grade, seventh grade. I've yeah. been in class, and the teacher thinking I'm taking notes. Before Dave East would put a spin on your favorite records with his East Mix series and drop original tracks like Keisha and Perfect featuring Chris Brown, which has close to 30 million views on YouTube. The record Perfect was me just wanting to give a record to the females, but in my own way. You know what I mean? I didn't really want to make no real super corny commercial, like something just, I wanted it to still be me, but aim towards the women. Before Nas would sign him to a record deal, before he was featured on the Hamilton mixtape and have a feature episode in the Netflix original series Rapture, before he would drop his album Beloved with one of the all-time rap legends and one of his biggest influences, Styles P. Dave East has become synonymous with bringing New York rap back to the forefront, and his unprecedented lyricism has gained him respect from legends like Styles P, Nas, and uh, Drake's dad. After dropping a slew of mixtapes from 2010 to 2015, he now has millions of streams, 221K Twitter followers, and 1.9 million Instagram followers at the time of recording. He's also become a heartthrob with the ladies. It could be the beard or maybe the height, but whatever it is, his look motivated Tyra Banks to ask him to model and got him a shout out from Nicki Minaj on her recent single, Barbie Dreams, where she jokingly fantasizes about banging all of the most popular rappers in the game. But it wasn't a smooth road to success for Dave. He was originally on a path to play professional basketball, growing up playing in the same league as Kevin Durant and getting a scholarship to play college ball before later getting kicked out. At one point, he was even homeless and recently said in an interview that his good looks actually helped make that period of his life a little bit easier. But how did he make it from being an ex-NBA prospect and college dropout sleeping in cars to one of the most respected rappers in the game? Well, you clicked on the right video. Good morning, afternoon, or evening, depending on when you're watching this. My name is Jeremy Hecht, hosting today, filling in for Michael McCrudden here on Before They Were Famous, documenting the life and career of Dave East prior to fame. We've done similar videos on other rappers, including Nas and J. Cole, so be sure to check those out after you finish watching this video, and let us know in the comment section below who you want us to document next. But enough with the introduction, let's jump right into Dave's come up. Be sure to subscribe and hit that bell. Boom! Dave East was born David Brewster Jr. on June 3rd, 1988 on the east side of Harlem, and you can probably guess where he got his rap name from. He's of Creole and Dominican descent. His mom, Faye, was originally from Louisiana and said that her and Dave's father, Dave Sr., had a few miscarriages, but Dave was the swimmer. I guess you could say he was persevering in life from day one. His mother was listening to jazz while giving birth and his dad would play earth, wind and fire for him. So he feels like he was born with an older soul. He grew up in Harlem at the 1199 Plaza, which he often reps in music and in interviews. 1199 Plaza, it's the east side, Spanish Harlem. This is where I got my first, first memories. All of the, the old dips that didn't stay right here. They all then came through at one point in their life, they was over here. Growing up, both of his parents had strong values instilling into him the importance of education. He always did well in school, but his mom later said that while doing homework checks, she found stacks of rap books, notebooks filled with raps that were definitely not a part of the required curriculum. English was always his best subject and he felt like rapping was just writing his life story. But he said that he fell in love with hip hop when he heard Dunn Started Something by DMX, The Locks, and Mace, and was influenced heavily growing up by Jada Kiss, Nas, Biggie, and his favorite rapper Styles P. But he told The Breakfast Club his biggest influence was Killa Can. On his first raps, he told Vibe, I was always a good writer, but I don't remember my first rap. I wasn't thinking on the scale of I could pop with this. Growing up in Harlem, I was always in the parks playing basketball. It wasn't actually rapping that was Dave's first love. In fact, he always had his sight on playing in the NBA. His dad said that when Dave was born, before he even gave his wife a hug, he gave his son a basketball. And his hoop dreams weren't just based off of wishful thinking and a metaphorically placed ball. The dude could actually play. Growing up in New York, he was playing basketball at Kingdom, which he calls his own Rucker Park, and the place where he met idol turned peer Jim Jones. Kingdom was like our own Rucker. Like, everybody come out here all night. Like, a lot of the top dudes in the city, I mean. After getting into some trouble in his freshman year of high school, but recognizing his talent, Dave Sr. suggested that Junior move down to Silver Spring, Maryland to stay with his sister for 10th grade and to play basketball at Springbrook High School. He played shooting guard and his high school team lost the state championship game on a buzzer beater to current NBA player Jeff Green at Northwestern High. 
He also loved to draw and would paint the backdrops for some of his high school musicals. During his junior year, he grew from 6'1 to 6'5 and had a huge season scoring 50 points in one game. But for the ladies asking, Google actually says that he is 6'4 and 3 quarters. So if you'd like, you can just round up. How tall are you? 6'4. Six, 6'4. Four. Six, four. We thought we were 6'5. I, we, might, I might be, I don't know. He might, okay. He made his mark playing in the Amateur Athletic Union with future NBA stars Ty Lawson, Grievous Vasquez, and oh, some guy named Kevin Durant. Dave played on a team with NBA player Michael Beasley who said this, excuse my French, but the mother could score. He's one of those guys that's gonna give you the same facial expression whether we're up 20 or down 20, whether he has 40 or just missed 20 shots, he's one of those silent killers. Dave received a D1 scholarship to the University of Richmond to play basketball, where he would major in communications, although he said that he always was interested in film. I wanted to get into film writing. I always had a gift. I always felt like I could write movies or somehow get into that. But his film dreams, along with his goal of going to the league, started to fade away just like his jumper, because in his first year at Richmond, he was fighting with the team captain, had constant issues with the coaches, and stopped going to class, ultimately resulting in him getting kicked out of school. He luckily got another scholarship offer to play at Townsend University in Baltimore, but his second chance led to his coach telling him that he was easily replaceable, which was pretty disheartening for Dave to hear. And his troubles off the court continued. Dave got caught up in the street life and left his hoop dreams behind. He went to jail in Baltimore for six months and while in jail, inspired by a Muslim cellmate, he found Islam, which taught him discipline and helped him grow into the person he is today. On his faith, he said, it's a balance, nobody's perfect. I always try to get some readings or some type of new information to where I'm learning more about Islam, just to become the best Muslim I can become. At the time of being incarcerated, he wasn't speaking much to his father and had too much pride to ask his mom for a place to stay, so he was homeless sleeping in cars. He told Page Six, I had slept in cars for a minute. I was homeless throughout the whole year. It was more that I didn't want to ask my mom and pops at the time, and I felt like I was grown and went through my little phase. During this time, Dave was really working on his writing and planning what life post-basketball would look like for him. After hearing his friends tell him that his raps were really good, he finally made the decision to pursue his dreams on the mic. His friend had a computer and a recording booth set up in his closet, where Dave said it was 20 dudes in a room. They were downloading beats off of YouTube using a mic that had a do-rag acting as the spit guard. In 2010, Dave got ready to release his first mixtape, Change of Plans. He sent the records to mixtape legend DJ Illwill in LA, who hit him right back and agreed to host the mixtape because of how much he loved the sound. Dave said that it really was just switching hustles. I thought I was going to the NBA and shout out to everybody that's doing it, but I had a change of plans. During this time period, he even recorded at his old on-court friend and Kevin Durant's house. He said that Kevin hit him up after hearing him rap. He was like, yo, that's you rapping? That's crazy. I got a studio in the crib and whenever you're free and wanna come out here, I'll make sure you get out here. I was like, uh, I'm free now. And just like that, East hopped on the red eye to OKC where he stayed with Kevin Durant for a week and a half to record his 2011 mixtape, American Greed. Kevin was already an NBA superstar, so he was living big and gave Dave some motivation. Dave told a story about going to a 7-Eleven to get blunt wraps, and since Kevin didn't smoke and was too scared to drive his new car, he tossed Dave the keys to his Maybach. It was sort of a juxtaposition for Dave driving a car like that while his mom was back home driving a school bus. Dave said he even made Kevin Durant get on a couple of beats, and there's a video of KD flowing over a Watch the Throne beat with Davies chilling in the background. It wasn't until 2014 when he really started to gain the attention of the music industry when the legendary Nas heard Davies' music. Dave was actually friends with Nas's younger brother Jungle, who also raps, but Nas had no clue that the two knew each other. Nas was in his house in LA when his business partner Anthony told him to check out this kid named Dave East. Nas said that when he first listened to the rhymes, it brought him back to a nostalgic feeling, taking him to the 90s era where he first started. Imagine Nas sign you hell of a dream, somebody pinch me. I used to sell his brother weed and sh so once I really started rapping and taking it seriously, everybody in the hood was listening to my sh Then Nas called me. I couldn't believe that sh His voice is so distinct. When he got on the phone, he was like, yo, what up, son? All I could think was, oh, shit, this is crazy. The two first met in person at the red carpet premiere of the documentary for Nas's Illmatic 20th anniversary. On the Angie Martinez show on Power 105, Nas gave Dave East a shout out on the air and in the Netflix original series Rapture, which premiered March 30th, 2018. East said that he really didn't need anything else from Nas in his life. 
but that that shout out was enough. Shout out to my man, Dave East. That's a, that's a real new one. In 2014, Dave East signed to Nas's Mass Appeal Records and released the mixtape Black Rose on July 22nd, 2014. The tape received co-signs from established vets like DJ Khaled, Wyclef Jean, and DJ Premier. And after another successful mixtape in 2015 with Hate Me Now, he was elected into the 2016 XXL freshman class alongside peers like 21 Savage, Lil Uzi, and Lil Yachty. But Dave's rapping stood out a little bit in that class. During the come up, his manager was Wayno, who is actually the current co-host of Everyday Struggle with Nadeska Alexis and DJ Academics. The partnership later fell off, but Wayno says there's no bad blood. I met Dave uh, doing uh, like hosting showcases at SOBs and Mm. And we got cool for like over a year. We just decided to go different ways. March 9th, 2016 was a day that changed Dave's life forever as his daughter Kyrie Chanel was born. Actually on the same day that Biggie died, one of Dave's favorite rappers and biggest influences. Things tend to come full circle. I feel most powerful when I'm with my daughter. I feel like God when I'm with Kyrie. In an interview with The Breakfast Club when asked how fatherhood has changed him, he said that he's more conscious about what he says on records, stating, I can still have fun, but it has to have a filter because I'm a father now. On September 29th, 2016, he officially announced his record deal with Def Jam Recordings, and the very next day, he released the mixtape Kyrie Chanel, named after his daughter, which peaked at number 38 on the US Billboard 200. Dave was featured on the Hamilton mixtape on December 2nd, 2016, with Aloe Black and Lin-Manuel Miranda. He almost missed the video shoot because he was taking care of his daughter. That's truly a good dad. Dave's career progressed into more than just music in January 2017 when he made his acting debut on Gabrielle Union's BET series, Being Mary Jane. He later appeared in the music video for Trina's song, It Ain't Me and Puma Ads. Honestly, the, the acting is fun, man. Like, it's something I always seen myself doing. Like, I can, I can react mad movies. Like, you know what I'm saying? I always could do that. Like, whole movies, I could say it word for word. He even auditioned for a role in the Star Wars franchise. I would have never in a million years been trying to think I would have been reciting like Luke Skywalker lines and it's crazy, man. I would love to see Dave as Luke in a reboot. His career aspirations continued to progress after modeling legend Tyra Banks spotted a picture of him and shot her shot at recruiting him onto the runway. She posted a pic to Instagram and said, so at Dave East, you out here making music, but you're not modeling? Hashtag male model. He was open to the offer and told XXL, it's like Steven Spielberg telling you to act and you being like, uh, well, I don't act. That's a pretty good analogy. Tyra wasn't the only one who was enamored by his appearance. Dave said that when he was homeless, his good looks helped him out a bit. I'm not gonna lie, my looks helped me. I was staying with a couple of girls. Shout out to them, they know who they are. Someone recently even made an entire page dedicated to Dave's looks. And I gotta say it's a little much, but check it out. As for his love life, in December of 2017, it's rumored that Dave started dating R&B singer Kehlani, but the two reportedly broke up in May of 2018. Rumors were also flying around about him and Christina Milian dipping it low key, but the pair both quickly put those to rest. In August 2017, he released his EP Paranoia, A True Story, which included the single Perfect featuring Chris Breezy. The EP peaked at number 9 on the Billboard 200, with the follow-up P2 dropping on January 16th, 2018. On October 5th, 2018, Dave linked up with Styles P for their album Beloved, which is actually another meaning for David. Sidebar, his first tattoo was getting King David on his forearms, with the placement being inspired by his favorite basketball player at the time, Carmelo Anthony. On working with Dave, Styles P said, As older males, they think they can't learn from younger people. I ain't the hottest on the street now, he's the hottest now. But it gives you legs, new ideas, new energies, because there aren't too many young people I'm really in the lab with outside of my circle, it's just family. As for what's next, a few years ago, Dave told All Def Digital that he was extremely inspired by Anthony Bourdain, rest in peace, and wants to travel the world and eat food. So maybe we see a cooking show from Dave in the future? I, wanna, I wouldn't eat the foods he be eating, but I would definitely wanna just go travel the world and just try different foods and just to see different cultures. He is currently a pretty big sipper of, uh, of juice. The cold coming and certain, I mean, little, like the green joint. I hated them at first. They got cayenne pepper and all that in it. But now I like it. You'd be surprised in like what the, the drink would do for you. He was also spotted in the studio with Drake, but we've yet to hear that record. So we'll be waiting on what's to come from those sessions. But as for the rest of the story, well, we'll have to wait and see because this is before they were famous. 
I'm Jeremy Hecht, dream good, live better, and I'll see you in the next video. Thanks for watching. Hit me up on Insta or Twitter at Jeremy underscore Hecht, and let me know who you want me to cover next on this channel, or hit the comments down below, and we'll make sure to get your requests going. This was my first video on the channel, so be sure to leave any constructive criticism, any pointers, any things you liked from this video, and I'll continue to try to make these videos as best as possible for you guys, the audience. Thank you so much for watching. Um, I think that's pretty much it. I don't really know how to end these videos, so I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna walk. I'm just gonna walk.